Now, in this session, we are going to discuss input output using handshaking signals. So, how the input devices let it be keyboard, how the output devices let it be printer can do the communication with the processor unit. So, in this case, we are taking another circuitry as in between as interfacing known as the programmable interfacing device. So, it will have certain number of ports and through that port the data will be going out for the output devices and data will be going coming in for the input devices. So, let me discuss them using some diagram and also the timing diagram. Now, see here we are having this MPU and there is a system data bus RD bar that is a write uh, sorry RD bar means read and bar means it is active low. These are the data lines strobe and input buffer full. So, this is a strobe, this is, this is input buffer full, this is interrupt request and rest thing are written explicitly. PID means programmable interfacing device. So, here you are considering the input. So, data input using handshaking signals and PID programmable interfacing device. Now, here we have considered the keyboard as the input device. Now, what will happen? At first, say user has pressed one key on the keyboard. Then the keyboard will produce some scan code. Some scan code will be produced and that will be coming through data lines through some input port of this programmable interfacing device. So, after putting the data in the input port register, this keyboard will also make the strobe line, this input device will also make the strobe line enabled to make it understand that one data byte has been put in its input port buffer or register. After getting this strobe, it will enable this input buffer full line from this PID, it will go to the input device. This input buffer full will indicate that do not send the next scan code because the previous scan code is now yet to be processed. So, please do not send the next scan code, otherwise it will override the unprocessed processed scan code which you sent. So, input buffer full will be that very control line. So, when the input buffer full will come, then in input device will be able to understand that the byte sent or the word sent has been recognized. So, it will make this strobe line disable. Now, this programmable interfacing device will make this interrupt request line enable to the MPU to indicate it that new byte is waiting in its input port buffer or register, please read it. In the case, the, when the MPU will find time, then it will make the RD bar line enabled and it will read the data from this port through the system data bus. When it is reading this uh, data from the system data bus through the system data bus, then this programmable interfacing device will make this line disabled because it knows that now the data is being read. So, when the data will be read, then MPU will make this RD bar, RD bar line disabled. So, that means the data has been read. Then programmable interfacing device will make this input buffer full disabled to indicate this particular input device that the what about the word it sent initially has been processed and has been read. So, this is a complete cycle and again the process can repeat if anyone press one of the keys of the keyboard. So, to depict this one, I am having this timing diagram. So, here we are having this input buffer full line, strobe line, interrupt request line, RD bar line and input data from port lines. So, I have shown this one. Okay. So, here strobe is active low, RD bar is active low because bar is there and interrupt request and input buffer full, they are active high because there is no bar above them. Okay, how to read this timing diagram? It is totally meaningless. No, it is not meaningless. It is very much meaningful. So, to read this timing diagram, you should read it in this way vertically because along the x axis I have plotted time, along the y axis I have plotted the voltage. So, I shall read it according to the progress of the time. So, I should read it in this way. Now, see which is getting enabled at first? Which is getting enabled? The strobe line is getting enabled. The strobe line is getting enabled. Okay. So, that is a strobe line. Yes, I told you after putting this data, the strobe line will be enabled. Then what will happen? The input buffer full will, 
will be enabled. Why? Because it will tell this input device do not send the next scan code, let it be processed. So, after getting this one, so input device will be able to understand that PID is taking the charge. So, it will make the strobe line disabled, it will make the strobe line disabled because strobe line is active low, so high means it has become disabled. Then it will make this interrupt precast line enabled, it is active high, so it is active high enabled. So, indicate this MPU that new byte is waiting in the port register. Then what will happen? MPU will find time and make the RD bar line enabled, RD bar enabled means active low. So, RD bar will be enabled to read the data from the port register through the system data bus. So, PID will be able to understand that MPU is doing its job. So, it will make this interrupt request line disabled. After reading the byte or the word, the RD bar will be disabled. And once RD bar is disabled, that means the data has been read. So, input buffer full line will be disabled. So, so you see, ultimately, I am going to get the complete cycle done and completed. So, in this way, the things will take place. So, this is a timing diagram, this is a schematic diagram. In this way, input devices are communicating with the processor units through handshake signals. Now, here I have considered the device as printer. So, we know the printer is nothing but a very good common example of output device. So, how this output device is working? Here what will happen? This programmable interfacing device will initially make this interrupt request line enabled. So, interrupt request line enabled means it will it is telling this MPU that I am sitting, I am sitting idle, I am sitting idle, are you having something to print? So, this interrupt request line will be enabled initially. So, when MP will find some task to be done by the printer to get something printed, then it will make this system data bus available and through this bus, it will write the data in this particular input port register and making this WR bar enabled. So, it is indicating PID, I am writing something. So, instantly this I, IN tier, sorry IN tier or INR, I, I, I think it is better to make this one IN tier. So, this IN tier line will be disabled to indicate MPU do not send any other byte or word, let it be printed to the printer, let it be guided to the printer. So, this line will become disabled, so MPU will not send the next byte or next word until this IN tier is getting enabled, that is an interrupt request. So, now programmable interfacing device will make this line enabled that is the output buffer full. So, I am having some byte please print it. Then output device like printer will read this particular data from this programmable interfacing device making this SEK acknowledgement line enabled. In the meantime, PID will be able to understand that then that this output device is reading. So, it will make this output buffer full line disabled. After reading this particular word, this ACK line will become disabled. That means, the data has been reached to printer for the printing. Then again PID will make this interrupt request line enabled to the MPU to indicate that I am sitting idle, are you having something to print? So, in this way, the cycle will get completed. To have the better visualization and understanding, let me go for the timing diagram of the same. So, here you see interrupt request line is initially enabled, ACK is active low, bar is there, output buffer full is active high, WR bar, so it is active low and this output data. So, now what is happening? You see in this particular diagram, at first the interrupt request line is enabled. So, at first WR bar line is getting enabled to indicate that I have written something. Instantly or within some time, interrupt request line will be disabled to indicate that MPU do not send the next word. So, now what will happen? The after writing the data, WR bar line will be disabled. The PID will make this output buffer line enabled. Now, printer will read the data, making this acknowledgement line enable bar. So, enable means active low. So, when this data will be will be is getting read by this printer, 
then this output buffer full line will be disabled indicating that now printer is reading so when the printer will read this word completely then acknowledgeable line will be disabled so now in programmable interfacing device we will be able to understand that it has done its purpose its task and assignment so again it will make this interrupt request line enabled to indicate processor unit are you having something to print so it will happen in this way and when these things are taking place through the data bus the data will be flowing when this particular acknowledgement line is enabled and data will be flowing through this and here also the data will be coming here when it is making this particular strobe line enabled so when the strobe line is enabled the data is available in the data bus so in this way all each and every line i have explained along with the time along with the progress so this is this particular session was on input output operations being carried out with the help of handshaking signals and programmable interfacing device i think you got the logic write this write this particular draw this particular timing diagram along with this schematic diagram in your exam copy if such question comes in future thanks for watching